Hey everybody, I'm President-elect Bill Whittle here with President-elect Steve Green and President-elect Scott Ott, all three of us having the same exact legal pre uh, ability to call ourselves President-elect as the other guy who's calling himself President-elect, but anyway, I digress. Uh, this is not about uh, schadenfreude, and this isn't about um, being happy over the uh, misfortunes of others. This is just simply a warning for people who don't seem to be able to process um, one of the fundamental realities about uh, life on this planet. So um, I wouldn't say enjoy the clip, but watch the clip. <laughs> Some people learn this in elementary school and some people don't and and some people are incapable of learning in elementary school that sometimes there are people that just want to hurt you and and that's all they want and when you try to tell them as the gentleman in this video did no no don't don't hurt my property. See my Biden sign? I'm protected. I'm on your side. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, sometimes it doesn't work. And and it doesn't seem to me to be so hard to figure out, but you can extrapolate what we just saw in that video to everything, including things like, well, if we just if we just got into a hot tub with bin Laden and had a couple of Chardonnays, I'm sure we could work this whole thing out once he realized that that we here um, are, 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 are we, we're, Michael Moore said this. Remember, why did bin Laden attack New York? We're liberals. Yeah. We're we're on his side. He, in fact, it was worse than that. He said we voted for Al Gore. That's it. <laughs> so. This kind of mental illness I think is going to be more predominant now in the weeks and months to come because uh, this idea that 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 showing your liberal bona fides will protect you from the product of your liberal philosophy is kind of like Dr. Frankenstein saying, you know, now put that girl down or else I'm going to give you a timeout, <laughs> Mr. Monster. Yeah, uh, the genie's out of the bottle. It's the golem. It's Frankenstein's creature. It's all that. Look, uh, the left let out these these uh, these partly violent rioters. I'm done with calling them mostly peaceful protesters. Uh, let them off the leash because they thought it would be politically beneficial for them to do that in an election year. And uh, you can't put that genie back in the bottle very easily. You don't you don't get Frankenstein's creature back on the slab, uh, you know, with the with the metal straps on him without uh, a whole lot of trouble. It, it's just not that easy. You know, something that I thought would play out more in this election that didn't 
So let me uh, just have a little mea culpa moment here is that being a Democrat, and I don't mean an elected Democrat, because I think the ones in Washington are all pretty much pure evil. But I'm just talking about your guy on the street, you know, your average, typical, well-meaning American lifelong Democrat. Uh, you know, Democrats have been painted since FDR as, you know, the, kind of the automatic party that everybody just who who wants to be a decent person is, oh, I'm a Democrat. Yeah, you, I'm, a, I'm a nice guy. And so being a Democrat was your 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 nice guy card. It was your get out of jail free for racism card and all the rest. And I honestly thought and we probably discussed this on the show over the summer. I honestly thought that as these BLM protests started calling everybody a racist, that it would strip the power of that get out of jail free card, that your average nice guy Democrat on the street who had always thought that being a part of this party made him a, a good person is now being told by his fellow party members that he's horrible and uh, racist and misogynist and transphobic and all the rest just because he's a guy. And oh, my God, a white guy, Ugh, all of that. And I thought that would play out in the election more than it did, and it would help Trump more than it did. Uh, so if a liberal is a or a conservative is a liberal who's been mugged by reality, maybe these guys just haven't been mugged quite enough yet. I saw a thing on Twitter uh, about all these uh, women, the college uh, college educated suburban women, the ones who are supposed to vote 117 percent for Biden this election, uh, were surveyed privately about uh, why they were actually supporting Trump. And the reasons they gave will just break your heart. Uh, you can find it on uh, Josh Krauschauser. Uh, Kra Kraus Hauser's, uh, I'm still saying his name wrong, uh, Twitter feed. He's with uh, National Journal. He's easy to find. It's just absolutely heartbreaking the way people have been forced into these political closets, not just by the, the violence in Portland and Minneapolis and elsewhere, but by this sort of intellectual thuggery against anybody who dares to think different, as they used to say in the ads. Um, <sighs> Let me tell you a story about maybe how this comes to an end. My 10 year old is a little guy. OK, he's just he's, he's one of the shortest kids in his class. And he always has been ever since he started preschool. And he's in fifth grade now. And back in second or third grade, he was having terrible trouble with a bully. And, you know, the school policy on fights is everybody's in trouble, you know, whether they started it or not. And I, I told my then probably six or seven year old, seven year old, I told him, look, there's a difference between school trouble and mom and dad trouble. If you get into trouble at the school for defending yourself against a bully, I will come pick you up from school because you've been sent home and I will go take you out for ice cream. And that's that's the difference between <laughs> mom and dad and school policy. And sure enough, the next day I am parked in the carpool lane, getting ready to pick him up. And uh, the kids are coming in from the playground before they get let out from school. And I, I kind of noticed that a lot of kids are looking at my car and sure enough, here comes his teacher uh, knocking on my window, has me roll down the window to tell me that Nate has been in this fight with this bully. I don't think she called him a bully. And Nate huffs by, his face is red. He's breathing hard. You can tell, even though he's a little guy, he gave this bully everything he had. And sure enough, that is the last time he had a problem with that bully. And I think for the rest of the oh, school year, others. with any bully in that school because he showed that he might have been the one of the smallest guys in the class, but he stood on his own two feet. He knocked that kid off of his feet and he just kept hitting him until the bully cried quit. And I'm afraid to tell my fellow Democrats that these genies that were unleashed, these golems, these Frankenstein creatures, that your own national leadership unleashed to rile up your vote, they're not going to get put back in the bottle until you punch him in the nose. That's it, Scott. The whole clip, the whole argument, the segment, all of it comes down to that one sentence. But there's my Biden sign. Right. I mean, that's that's the entire reason we're having this discussion. What's the matter with you? You're supposed to riot and burn down Trump supporters houses. I am immune from your violence because of my political choices. And what they find is that these people are not much interested in your lawn sign. 
Some people just want to watch the world burn. And this realization comes so late for so many people. And I'm not talking about late in, in regard to the election. But when you look at the number of people that, that did vote for Joe Biden, um, there sure, sure as heck seems to be a lot of votes for people um, who are openly calling for defunding the police and often and saying we're, we're going to do more to support Black Lives Matter and all the rest. I think that many people that voted for Joe Biden thought, well, these riots are only going to be a problem for people who aren't like us because we're on their side. Once we see, once they see that we're on our, their side, then they'll leave us alone. Well, guess what? I don't want to extrapolate from this inc incident any larger than I have to extrapolate. Um, but what I do want to say about this is that I think that the folks who are committing acts of violence against others, burning things, breaking into things, um, you know, uh, threatening people in the streets um, are doing a great deal of harm and causing a great distraction for something that we literally must deal with. For anybody to sit back and say, well, because of the Black Lives Matter movement and and the people among them who are causing these kinds, this kind of terror in the streets among in some areas of the country, uh, then we reject a, a conversation about anything. I think that there's great opportunity here for common ground between libertarians and conservatives, as well as people on the left to say, look, we've got a serious problem with justice in this country. We've got a serious problem with mass incarceration. We've got a serious problem with a federal government empowering local police forces to essentially armor up, stop and frisk, do civil forfeiture, do no-knock raids, and all of this kind of stuff that results in people being incarcerated at a rate that has never been seen in human history in this country that's land of the free and home of the brave. I think there are civil liberties issues that we have an opportunity to address, and we're going to miss it because we're pissed off at a few jackasses who are rioting in the streets. I, I don't care about those people. I want them to stop. I think they should be busted. They should go to jail. But it doesn't give me license to say, well, look, if your side of the aisle doesn't restrain the violence of these jack wagons, then we don't even have to have a conversation about it. I think we should take the opportunity to say, you know what, let's both get these kind of people under control and let's have a serious discussion. If the kinds of policing activities were going on in white suburban neighborhoods that happen in inner city black neighborhoods with drug busts and stop and frisk policies and all of that, we would be outraged. We would think the police state had come down upon us. But because it's happening in the inner cities, we allegedly don't have an opinion. We do have an opinion, and conservatives and libertarians should not stand for it, and they should come together with well-meaning people from the other side of the aisle and screw these people that are having these violent outbursts in the streets. Lock them up if you must, but don't damn the entire cry from people who have a legitimate cry that their neighborhoods have been subjected to this kind of violence since the Johnson administration and who have just completely destroyed the core of urban America. Instead, we treat it like they're the enemy. We should be coming together around these issues. And I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick of isolating these little incidents that happen and saying, oh, well, this isn't this uh, endemic or, or, or indicative of everything that's going on in the country. It's not indicative. And it's a sideshow that's designed to keep us focused on this instead of actually making the country a better place. I disagree. I to suspected me, you might. Yeah. To me... The issue is there is a mob outside beating drums in the middle of the night, intimidating everybody. And when the guy says, no, no, I'm 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 part of the guys that are supporting you, because that's the argument. When he says, see the Biden sign, he's saying I support Black Lives Matter. So therefore, I'm on your team. Why are you bothering me? And the response is not, oh, we didn't realize you were on our team, that you're an ally. The response is, no, you can't be an ally there, We don't have any allies. You know, the, the, what the, the language they were using was just, you know, no, you, how are you, how's a white, old white guy going to tell me how to protest? And the reason that this is, that this is not about police brutality or anything else is because it's about the mob. It's about the mob. That's what this video is about. It's about the mob. It's about the fact that people don't care about politics. This has got nothing to do with politics. Because if it did have something to do with politics, then this guy pointing out that this Biden sign means that he's a supporter of all of these causes would have some effect. But it didn't. I wasn't talking didn't about politics or police brutality, Bill. 
Well, what were you talking about then? What I was talking about is a lot of issues of justice that we have common ground with the people who are part of the Black Lives Matter movement that really care about justice, that we have an opportunity to reach out to those people and build some bridges and solve some problems instead of just saying, oh, look, here's another video that shows just what you thought, that these people are bastards who are abusing other people. Yes, they are. But that's not the issue. That's a local thing. That's like, it's, it's, it's not a federal crime, so to speak. It's a local crime, it should be dealt with at the local level, and we should continue to work on issues of common ground so that, are, are we manufacturing better people in this mass incarceration culture of ours? I live in a city where a quarter of a mile from my house, buildings were boarded up and every single one of them said, we love BLM because it is the same anointment of the lintels that um, that the Biden sign is. Don't burn us down. We're on your side. I saw that get to within a quarter of a mile of my house. So I'm not, this is not a theoretical, this is not a theoretical issue for me. This isn't an issue of civil rights. This is an issue of people boarding up their property so that they don't get burned to the ground by people who do not have any kind of a political operation involved with this whatsoever. The entire purpose of this video is to show people who think that this is a political, that this is a political act, that these riots and these burnings and this intimidation is somehow political. And if you're on the right side of history, then you don't have to pay a price for it. These are the people that unleashed this lawlessness. And now the lawlessness is on their front yard. And now they want to be left alone because they're on the side that unleashed the lawlessness. Well, the lawlessness doesn't care what side you're on. That's the entire point. They don't care. They don't care what side you're on. And that is the problem here. This should never have gotten to the level of people burning down things and street violence. Those people should have been arrested from the beginning. And then you would have been have, able to have a legitimate um, discussion about this. But the political party that did in fact say, no, we completely support these protests and these riots and these burnings. And I live in a city where the mayor told the police, do not arrest these people, do not put them in jail, do not do anything to hinder them. And that came down from the governor. And that's why these buildings are, are, are boarded up a quarter mile from my house. And that's why everybody else is putting these marks on the door because they want to be protected from the mob because they're not being protected by their government or their police force or their country or anybody else. This is what happens when you use the mob as a political weapon, when you encourage the mob. How many days has downtown Portland been on fire or downtown Seattle? And what's, what do you think the people who live inside those zones have to say about all this? When you basically decide we're going to take the government and we're going to take law enforcement out of the neighborhood for a political, political objective, then you've got a bigger problem than, gee, we're not coming together on this one. You are now using an uncontrollable force of violence for your political objectives. And when this guy said to this mob, no, I'm, I'm on your side, the mob didn't respond that way. That's a valuable thing for people to know if they're going to continue to support this kind of lawlessness. I think it's an extremely valuable thing for people who support this kind of political activity that guarantees them these kind of cities and these kind of riots, I think people need to know that, no, you don't get to buy your way out of this by showing everybody that you've got a lawn sign, meaning you're one of the good guys, because it doesn't matter to them. This is not a political movement. And you better wake up to the fact that it's not a political movement. And they've demonstrated it's not a political movement because when the guy said, look at my political sign, they said, go F yourself. So, so what happens when you unleash the mob? And this is why the mob should not be unleashed. That's why this video is important. It's not important for me because I already understand what a mob is. I know what a mob is. I know what happens when people burn down sittings and when they go and, and smash windows. They're not making a political point. They're using somebody else's political point to smash windows. And that is human nature. And that's the way it is. And so we'd better understand this right now. If we think we're going to continue to be able to use street violence and intimidation as a political party's policy. It is not going to protect you when the result of your decision arrives on your doorstep at the middle of the night, beating drums and calling for your blood. We'll see you next week on Right Angle.